On May 12, 2012, an extraordinary event took place at the Civic Center in Helena, Montana. Alan R. Scott, music director of the Helena Symphony, led some 430 musicians and singers in a rare performance of Mahler's Eighth Symphony for a sold-out audience of over 1,700 people. This performance was the culmination of a multi-year endeavor to present each of Mahler's nine symphonies to the Civic Center audience. Few orchestras anywhere in the world perform the majestic Mahler 8, let alone commit themselves to the entire repertoire. We've been planning it for eight years, and we've been very carefully throughout looking throughout the region. Obviously, we said, well, we can't choose New York. I mean, logistically, we couldn't choose ensembles. So we had to look at ensembles that could get here, um, and at the same time, ensembles that were credible enough you know, to do it. So we looked around for about a year and a half, and unbeknownst to perhaps the people we were looking at. <laughs> Alan had the vision to do this Mahler cycle, concluding with the Mahler aid. How do I find choruses? How do I find guest artists? And we needed, we had certain requirements. We wanted um, adult choruses of at least a hundred. I had to look also for a children's choir. There's a, it's originally specifies boys choir, but we didn't need that. And again, we needed a group, a sizable group. We wanted it maybe 30 to 50. They had to be comfortable singing classical music. They had to be comfortable singing the languages and preferably having done some traveling and um, having very good musical standards. The triumphant performance of Mahler's Eighth Symphony was predicated on consultations and collaborative exercises in multiple rehearsal spaces in three states, including a middle school and a high school in Salt Lake City a music room at Idaho State University, and the magnificent Stevens Performing Arts Center in Pocatello, Idaho, St. Paul's Methodist Church and the Civic Center in Helena, Montana. What follows is a short accounting of a long and involved process of bringing together singers from the Choral Arts Society of Utah, the Salt Lake Children's Choir, the Camerata Singers from Pocatello, Idaho, the Helena Symphony Chorale, eight soloists, the Helena Symphony players and staff, and the supporters of all these groups to make Mahler 8 happen in Helena. And, but, but ultimately, in Alan's um, vision, it's always what will artistically work. That's why, right. the gym, that's why we wipe out the gymnasium concept. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yes, it'll fit. Yes, we can put everybody in there. Yes, we can get a big crowd. Okay artistically, it's not going to cut it, especially for a work of this thing, so. All along the way, decisions had to be made, lots of them, big and small. 
So as long as the C natural is covered. Okay. But if you feel like they can, if you feel like the twos can split amongst themselves, mm -hmm. then you should be fine. Preparing for Mahler 8 put Maestro Scott on a plane and a lot of other people on the move. Soprano ones on the front two rows at about this place, uh, soprano twos. So it should be soprano one, two, alto one. In ancient times, Confucius set forth that the relationship between ruler and subject ought to be benevolent and loyal, respectively. A symphony conductor is in most instances a benevolent dictator. For a performance to turn out great, the musicians have to suspend their individual preferences and bend to the will of the maestro. You can't go out for lattes during the rest. You're, you're, you're gay. You, you play the rest here and in here. Accende, right from the first. Accende. Okay, we're going to do the bar building thing. 